Hi everyone, it's Professor Watson. How are you doing? I am so happy to be here and so excited to talk to you today about something that I have recently uh, studied and just am becoming more and more aware of and starting to understand better. So actually through this lesson, we both are learning and have been learning and I hope that you'll be able to come away with something and be able to tell the differences. I really want this lecture to be a place where uh, we can be open and have new ideas formed and discussions. I want you to know ahead of time, nothing is to be offensive. And if it is, you can surely share that with me. Um, and I apologize ahead of time. I know it can be a sensitive issue what we're going to discuss today, but I think that it's an important one. And so that's why we're going to definitely talk about it. And it surely fits within the scope of social psychology. So let's get started. So today is uh, stereotypes, prejudice, discrimination, and racism, and what are the differences? So sometimes we use these terms um, interchangeably or they're intertwined, but they actually have different, um, what's the word I wanna use? Well, I guess psychologically, they have different places and different preferences, and that's what I really wanna get across to you all. So we're gonna get right into the lecture. So let's go ahead and start. So what are our stereotypes about? So we have these great things called stereotypes, right? We think of this is the way the high school cheerleader should look, the talented athlete, the math whiz, and you all did that great little quiz, right? Or at the beginning of the semester saying, who is your professor? And many of you all picked the woman I thought you would pick because I know that I sound giggly and excited and free spirited and I knew that she was like that. I was pretty sure you all could knew that I was young from the toys that I liked and the cartoons that I watched and and uh, my favorite cereal. So I kind of kind of tricked you all a little bit and put her in thinking that she would be the popular choice. I'm actually very, very used to people not thinking that I'm a professor and more specifically when I tell someone that I teach they ask me what high school do you teach at <laughs> well I don't teach high school I teach at you know on the university level oh community college of southern Nevada nope <laughs> University of Nevada Las Vegas so I'm very used to people not kind of fitting that because I honestly don't fit the stereotype of most professors. So I liked what Lippmann had to say, the little pictures we carry around inside our heads, right? Yeah, that's what he says. That's what a stereotype is. And I totally and completely agree with that. So let's go on to the next slide. So stereotypes has to do with categorization. And categories are general ideas about groups or objects, events, or ideas. And we're just gonna use an example of race. And so in what, uh, within a category, you can have subcategories um, that represent further classification of a concept, okay? So we have race or ethnic group is actually what I should have up there because that's the more, um, race has to do with just biological and an ethnic group actually has to do with the entire cultural system and what everything that makes up a person. So I should have said ethnic group. But then you have a, a, within these categories, subcategories of a Caucasian ethnic group, an Asian af ethnic group, African American, Latino, so on. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. So categories contain prototypes. Um, and prototypes are typical examples that serve as a point of comparison to determine whether or not other objects belong to that category. So when you see these three different things, what is your prototype for a fruit? What is your prototype for a sport? What is your prototype for alcohol? So with a fruit, we normally think of an orange or an apple. We no normally think of um, a tomato, although tomato by definition is actually a fruit, right? Okay, so we have these prototypes set up or these categories set up. So what um, a stereotype actually does, I think that's on the next slide. So let's go on and move to that. Okay, so this is another thing that we're saying. It's a tendency to categorize events, objects, people, 
and inflexible patterns, etc. And there it is. It creates cognitive relief for us. So what a wedding looks like, a successful job, a woman, again, these things like fruits and alcohol, what sets in that type of category? What gives us cognitive relief? So a lot of times I had a a student my first year teaching. He was wonderful. I love Ryan. So Ryan came into my classroom and he stood about six foot eight. And so we were kind of talking about things. And again, I sort of did my serial and introduction. And and the first thing he said was, no, I don't play basketball, you know, and he was used to hearing that his whole entire life. Well, most people were like, oh, my other students, including me, were like, oh, okay. well, now we know. He's like, I'm a political science major. I want to be a judge one day, yada, yada. has nothing to do. I'm uncoordinated. But because of stereotyping, which can be positive or negative, we tend to lump people together because it gives us cognitive relief. It allows us to categorize them, clunk, 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 chunk them together rather than saying, okay, we have this six foot seven person who's going to be a lawyer, this six foot seven person who plays volleyball, this six foot seven person who, you know, is going to be a chef. We get the generality and we clump them together and it gives us that cognitive space, that cognitive relief. Okay. So that's what goes on with stereotyping, categorization, and also a prototype. Let's go on to the next slide. So we learned about Alport, right? I told you guys about him during the first, uh, during our bingo game. And he says the law of least effort. Again, it gives us some cognitive relief. That's what's going on with that. And stereotypes are, again, as in um, Matsumoto said, they're not necessarily negative. They can also be positive, but it is a cognitive transaction or a cognitive cognitive situation that occurs with stereotyping. And we'll see some differences um, when we define some of the other terminology. All right, let's go on to the next slide. So can anyone stereotype? I thought that was a good question. And the question is, the answer is yes. Anyone can stereotype. Again, it can be positive or negative. And the reason why we use stereotypes is because it allows us to have some type of cognitive uh, relief. It uh, closes that cognitive dissonance, maybe you all learned about in cognitive psychology. Make sure that that doesn't occur, that we don't have differences. It's not like, oh, this person is very, very tall. And what do you mean that he's, you know, I don't know, like, like a school teacher. It normally doesn't fit our cognitive belief about people who are very, very tall. All right, let's go on to the next one. So these are some notes about stereotypes, just things that you can remember. They're fairly common. Almost everyone does it. I keep saying that, so you guys probably should know that's going to be a test question. If I repeat things a lot, you're going to see it on your quiz, okay? It can be positive or negative. Influences our decision-making, and it provides cognitive relief. What does it do? Provides cognitive relief. Let's us have a little bit of space and make sure that we get all those memories and thoughts into our beautiful, brilliant brains. Okay, I think this is the last slide on stereotypes. I was really reiterating that. All right, let's go on to prejudice. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so this is Dr. Alport again. And uh, so he defines prejudice as... Um, Ethnic prejudice is based upon a faulty and inflexible general generalization felt or expressed directed towards a group as a whole, an individual mem or uh, an individual member of that group. OK. So it's a negative attitude toward distinguishable group of people based solely on their membership of that group. And that's the only reason we're going to go on to the next one, which I think has a couple of other definitions. The tendency to prejudge others on the base of, basis of their group membership. And prejudice, again, is a positive or negative attitude, judgment, feeling about a person that is generalized from attitudes held about the group to which the person belongs. And that's Dr. Um, James Jones, and he's a pretty infamous social psychologist, um, if you all have heard of him. So prejudice has to do with prejudging, right? It's a feeling or behavior just based on what that person belongs to. It's not racially defined. It's not just sexually defined or gender defined. It can be due to a different ability, 
um, because of where someone works or lives. So prejudices have to do with lots of different things. And if you just really think of it as a prejudging based on X, Y, and Z, that's where prejudice comes in. All right, let's go to the next slide. So can anyone be prejudiced? Yes, anyone can be prejudiced. So I had a classmate recently who was prejudiced against people who wore their pants too low. So every time he saw someone, I don't say every time, but many times that he, when he saw someone with their pants buckled behind their bottom, he was like, these kids are just renegades and just went on and on and on and had no idea. Perhaps he had one experience with someone who wore their pants too low. I'm not exactly sure, but he sure did have a prejudice against um, against those young men. And I kind of felt bad for him because we have no idea. For all we know, he could have been going to a Fortune 500 company, maybe more unlikely than likely, but it's possible, right? Work with me, y'all. It's possible. All right, let's go on to the next slide. Discrimination. So discrimination is the unfair treatment of others based on 